Greetings and salutations YouTube community and welcome to my channel. Hi guys. So this is going to be another video by yours truly, Everyday Oppression. Um, my hair is doing some sort of stupid thing right now, so I'm just going to quickly hide it. One second. Oh, there we go. <sighs> Wearing hats always makes me look like a 10 year old boy. <sighs> Crap. Today I'm going to actually do a video commentary on a very good video that I watch. I'll probably break this up into two, maybe three shorter films. So this is a response video in regards to a video I've watched entitled Jordan Peterson debate on the gender pay gap, campus protests and postmodernism. Uh, it looks like it was hosted by Channel 4 News uh, in UK with this female um, interviewer, uh, female host. What this showcases is that this is a perfect example of a smart person and a dumb person who's simply not getting it. Jordan Peterson, you've said that men need to, quote, grow the hell up. Tell me why. So already we're starting this video off. Uh, basically, Jordan Peterson thinks that grown men should grow up and I'm in the same ballpark. Actually, I think a grown adult should grow up, whether you be male or female. Feminism ideology seeks to change masculinity because they see it as a bad thing or evil and oppressive. So they want to interject femininity into our young boys and ultimately our men in order to change their masculinity. It sounds like Jordan Peterson here essentially wants men to grow the hell up. And really, I agree. Well, because there's nothing uglier than an old infant. There's nothing good about it. it. People who don't grow up don't find the sort of meaning in their life that sustains them through difficult times and they are certain to encounter difficult times. Because life is not perfect and life is not fair. You will be presented with hurdles, ladies and gentlemen, and it would be better if you were, oh, I don't know, an adult in order to deal with said hurdles. And they're left bitter and resentful and without purpose and adrift and hostile and resentful and vengeful and arrogant and deceitful and, and of no use to themselves and of no use to anyone else and no partner for a woman and there's nothing in it that's good. So you said, I mean, that sounds pretty bad. Well, of course it's bad. Nobody wants to take care of a gigantic infant. When it comes to relationships, uh, and I think this is the same across the field, like both men and women want a competent partner, one who is confident, uh, sexy, and intelligent, you know, that's an extra bonus. But essentially, we want a partner who is able to take care of themselves as well as the potential to take care of you. And sadly, in today's modern world, uh, uh, postmodernistic world, young children are not being taught how to grow up. They are not being taught how to be adults and uh, told about responsibilities that come alongside with being an adult. They are being catered to and pampered and spoiled and not allowed to have these opportunities to make mistakes in order to grow from them. You're saying it's there's bad. a crisis of masculinity? I mean, what do you do about it? You tell, you help people understand why it's necessary and important for them to grow up and adopt responsibility. Why that isn't a shake your finger and get your act together sort of thing. Why it's more like, why it's more like uh, a delineation of the kind of destiny that makes life worth living. I've been telling young men, and, but it's not, I wasn't specifically aiming this message at young men to begin with. It just kind of turned out that way. So he's essentially right here is that it's not so much that we're shaming young people into growing up. It's just that it's essential for a confident person. It's essential for a happy living. If you want to be happy in life, uh, you have to bear some of the weight in, in accomplishing that. So it's not just got to fall into your lap. You have to work at it. Uh, fortunately, my parents always taught me uh, good values, respect others to, uh, well, at least the ones that respect you, <laughs> uh, because respect goes both ways. But they also told me that there is benefits in working hard and staying true to your values, staying true to your morals, staying true to your own confidence. And I can safely say that I'm relatively stable in my mind and my body. 
uh, and my current situation with where I'm at in life. Jordan Peterson is talking about people growing up as adults because it'll be a lot easier for you to deal with the hardships that life sometimes throws at us. And it's mostly, you admit, it's mostly men listening. I mean, it 90% is. of your audience is a man, Well, it's right? about 80% on, in, on YouTube, which is a, YouTube is a male domain primarily, so it's hard to tell how much of it is because YouTube is male and how, how much of it is because of what I'm saying. Is it mostly male viewers who are commenting on him, Jordan Peterson because the majority of the audience is actually male? Or is it because it's actually what he's saying that's resonating with men more so than women? He's got to go on in regards to certain areas having predominantly more male audience versus a female one and vice versa. You, you, what I've been telling young men is that there's an actual reason why they need to grow up, which is that they have something to offer, you know, that, that, that people have within them this capacity to set the world straight and that's necessary to manifest in the world. And that also doing so is where you find the meaning that sustains you in life. And that's a very good point. It's a very positive, uh, constructive means in finding one's own happiness in life. One thing I've noticed about younger people, especially teenagers uh, and young adults in college, is that there's this constant drive to please other people around you, to always do good by others because that is how you find happiness. But sometimes... Um, that doesn't really pan out because you put so much trust in others and put so much out of yourself, the good self, onto them, expecting the exact same results back. But when when those same results don't get thrown back at you, this is where depression hits. This is where stress hits and anxiety because this one individual is putting out so much, but they're not getting the same amount back. And that's really because life is difficult and not everybody will think and act the same way you do. I was a people pleaser in college. That's why I drank the Kool-Aid. That's why I was pro-feminist. That's why I catered to my women friends without ever getting anything back. Uh, one might call that gynocentristic in nature, but you know that's a different argument altogether. But what I'm saying is, is that now in my 30s and ever since I've been red-pilled, I've taken a look at my life and what makes me happy, and I am living my life according to my values. I'm not afraid to talk and speak my mind. I'm not afraid to correct people when they have been mistaken over factually proven things, such as the gender wage gap being false. I am confident enough to actually uh, speak my mind. And I don't need the approval of any other person in order to fulfill my happiness and to give my life meaning. That's what Jordan Peterson is talking about. So what's gone so, wrong then? Oh God, all sorts of things have gone wrong. I, I think that, I don't think that young men are, hear words of encouragement, some, some of them never in their entire lives, as far as I can tell, that's what they tell me. And This is true, and this is a, a major factor of the men's rights movement, and even in the MGTOW section uh, of the Manosphere on the internet, is that our boys are being systematically attacked, groomed, and even shamed about their masculinity. We're like, we are changing them and not accepting them for who they are. Now, the feminist argument is this rhetoric about boys will be boys and that, that somehow that's bad. Now, I can agree that in some aspects, uh, boys will be boys uh, rhetoric is deflecting from a serious topic, but ultimately boys will be boys has everything to do with allowing boys the freedom to be boys. And we're not seeing that in, in social media. We're not seeing that in education, especially. Uh, we're not seeing that at post-secondary level of education. And we're not seeing that in, in public spaces, uh, especially under a feministic ideology. The fact that the words that I've, been, that I've been speaking, the YouTube lectures that I've done and put online, for example, have had such a dramatic impact is an indication that Young men are starving for this sort of message because like, why in the world would they have to derive it from a lecture on YouTube? Because the social media, mainstream media and leftist uh, politics are drilling it into our skulls that being a boy is wrong. That somehow there is something inherently wrong with boys. But no, 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 uh, being a girl is perfectly normal. 
being a girl is 100% angelic and perfect and everything positive about the world. But if you were born a boy, you have original sin. Being born a boy means you had the potential to be a monster or a rapist or an oppressor. And there's nothing that we can do that will change that. So these, these feminists and SJWs are, are trying their hardest to force this out of boys. But frankly, in my opinion, they're not simply accepting what is. They're throwing their insecurities about what a boy is and what it means to be a man. They, they miscue what that means and they place it on boys and they're trying to smash it out of us. This is why a lot of men's rights activists, both male and female, are against feminism. This is why a lot of anti-feminists are sick and tired of hearing this rhetoric and this authoritarian uh, narrative. Uh, this is why we fight for men's and boys' rights, because you are systematically diminishing masculinity in order to uplift femininity. Um, I'm sorry, but we need a good balance of both in order for the world to move along. You know, they're not being taught that they that it's important to develop yourself. But does it does it bother you that your audience is predominantly male? Does that isn't isn't that a bit divisive? Now I will point out here for a lot of her questions, I'm basically calling them leading questions. Okay, so it's very important that we figure this out. There are questions that an interviewer asks their their interviewee, uh, and lets them have the space to answer said questions based on their own experience, their expertise, or their own personal values. What this female host is doing is she is asking leading questions. Why? Because it's my assumption that she has already come to the conclusion about Jordan Peterson's character, what she's read online, obviously the left-leaning media who has slandered him and misunderstood what he has said, she has now used that as a basis to confirm her bias against Jordan Peterson. So a lot of her questions will revolve around uh, sexism being the answer to everything. Uh, her questions will revolve around women being victimized somehow due to this sexism and that men are the problem. No, I don't think so. I mean, it's no more divisive than the fact that YouTube is primarily male and Tumblr is primarily well, that's pretty women, divisive, female. Isn't well, it? Tumblr is primarily female. That's pretty divisive. You see what she's doing here? And so instead of listening to Jordan Peterson, she has already concluded that most answers will be divisive. It's men versus women, girls versus boys, men are from Mars, and women are from crazy. But you're just saying that's the way it is. Well, it's, I'm not saying anything. It's just an observation that that's the way it is. See, and again, this is where people misunderstand the words that are coming from smart people's mouths. Jordan Peterson is a psychologist, like a verified, certified psychologist. He's been at this field for many, many years and as a post-secondary uh, professor. He knows what he's talking about, okay? he I think he understands the human psyche and the way that we behave a lot better than this news reporter. Um, there's plenty of women that are watching my lectures and coming to my talks and buying my books. It's just that the majority of them happen to be men. Anti-feminist women, most likely. Uh, it's, what's in I, it for the women, though? Sanity. Well, what sort of partner do you want? Do you want an overgrown child? I don't. Or do you want someone to contend with that's going to help you? And that so you're you can saying rely on? women have some sort of duty to sort of help fix the crisis of masculinity? The crisis of masculinity. Yeah, I think women have a huge part in that. I think that they should listen to uh, masculine people, a.k.a. men, who are coming forward now with their issues, uh, feelings of insecurity, or, you know, just any old problem. If women expect men to carry a lot of the load for them, it's only fair that women should carry half that load, too. Wouldn't you agree? Well, it depends on what they want. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly, exactly how I laid it out. Like, uh, women want deeply want men who are competent and powerful. And, and I don't mean power in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in that they can exert tyrannical control over others. That's not power. That's just corruption. What a great line. That's not power, that's corruption. 
corruption would indicate that somebody has the access to power and they are misusing it, uh, usually for selfish means or for evil deeds or something that will dominate over some other person and strip them of their human rights, their civil rights, yada, yada, yada. Power is competence. And why in the world would you not want a competent partner? Well, I, I know why, actually. You can't dominate a competent pow partner. Bingo. Now, unfortunately, um, any of my female viewers who are watching this, you might, you know, get a little bit testy with me, but I honestly think that a woman wants somewhat of a submissive man because that way they have some sort of dominance over top of them, some sort of power. Now, I'm not saying all women are like this, clearly, but there are some relationships which are unhealthy to start off with because a woman is looking for a man to dominate. Uh, this is where a lot of issues come from. This is where manipulation of your partner comes in, sometimes verbal and physical abuse uh, that is required to keep them submissive. But it's the same way uh, with the other dynamic. Uh, I think there are some men out there who want a submissive woman in order to dominate them. So it all stems from this desire. Like, What desire do we want in a partner? Do we want somebody who's equal standing with us, who's confident in their own life and is willing to share that life with your goals, your dreams? Or there's a partner that is trying to dominate you by stripping you of your agency, uh, making you submissive. So there are a lot of women who will manipulate men into uh, being submissive in order to get what they want, in order to get money or status or children that they can use as pawns against men. To the female members of this, uh, this video, if you are watching this, I know that most women aren't like this, and I know, but there are some women who use men in order to manipulate and dominate over them, and that is not cool. And I say the exact same for certain men out there, too. So, so if you want women domination... Want to dominate, is that what you're saying? No, I'd say women who have had their relationships impaired with... impaired, their relationships with men impaired and who are afraid of such relationships will settle for a weak partner because they can dominate them. Female feminists and male feminists. They call those male feminists cucks. But it's a suboptimal solution. Do you it think that's what a lot of women good. are doing? I think there's a substantial minority of women who do that. And I think it's very bad for them. They're very unhappy. It's very bad for their partners. Although the partners get the advantage of not having to take any responsibility. So it's basically you get to choose your ending kind of book. Do you grow up to be an adult and uh, accept all the responsibilities that come from being an adult? Or do you become a cuck, essentially, and uh, basically become a rug to be walked on by others where you don't get the pleasures of being an adult, but you also don't get the added responsibilities of what it means to be an adult. So it's a pick or choose kind of scenario. I personally would want to be an adult because I'm not afraid of uh, taking up the responsibilities that go part and parcel with being an adult. Now, unfortunately, I have been seeing a lot of people in the left-leaning camp, a lot of colleges and universities, and people who, who pamper young adults into this mentality that you can have it all and you don't even have to lift a finger in order to do it. Social media has actually pushed a lot of that, and I think it has a lot to do with the access to social media and how easy it is for us to gain information, it's super fucking easy. Whereas in the past, you would have to go to a building, aka a library, uh, in order to read up on this information. So if everything is handed to you in life, it will increase your chances of not growing up to be an adult. And it, we have a lot of people who aren't growing up as adults because they're not being taught how to be an adult we should have uh, seminars for parents to help raise their children not to be grown-up babies but to be individual free-thinking adults that would solve a lot of problems but what gives you the right to say that western society our laws that we have expressed uh, to allow freedom of speech and freedom of expression you have the right to say what you want madam Jordan Peterson should have the right to say that what what's on his mind as well. I mean, maybe that's how women want their relationships, those women. I mean, you're making these vast generalizations. Yeah, much like uh, feminists do when it comes to men and that men are all rapists, men are all scum, white men are always in power, yada, 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 yada. When it comes to generalizations, 
Everyone is victim to generalizations. I'm a victim of it. I do it all the time. Uh, Jordan Peterson probably does it once in a while. This woman obviously is doing it. What we need to let everybody know is that when we overgeneralize an idea or topic or person, we're not actually talking about everybody and that we already know that it's overgeneralizing. We're just trying to get our point across. I'm a clinical psychologist. Right, so you've, you're saying you've done your research and women are unhappy dominating men. Yeah, well, I trust him over you, sweetheart. So there's that. I didn't say they were unhappy dominating men. I we, said it was a bad long-term solution. Again, proof that she is not actually listening to what he's saying. It's, it's like she has a blocker around her ears. Headphones. She has headphones on her ears. And she's all she's hearing is wobble, 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 women's rights. Wobble, 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 men benefit. Wobble, 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 women are weak. Wobble, 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 women don't deserve same pay. Wobble, wobble, wobble. This is what people who are have a confirmation bias about somebody's character and i assume that what she's read online or have been spoken to from left-leaning sources is that the left-leaning sources have labeled jordan peterson as a hater as a bad person and she's going off from that source but yet here he is right in front of her explaining his views but she's not listening okay you said it was it's making the them miserable thing. Yes, it is. And it depends on the time frame. I mean, there can be, there's intense pleasure in momentary domination. Well, of course, it's a sense of power. We get euphoria from the electricity, you know, connecting in our brain, saying that we are better than or we have an advantage over someone else. That's why people do it all the time. But it's no formula for a long-term, successful long-term relationship. That's reciprocal, right? Bingo. Any long-term relationship is reciprocal, virtually by definition. Let me put a quote to you from the sure. book, where you say there are whole disciplines in universities forthrightly hostile towards men. Basically anything that is female dominant and is always attacking men, that's, these are the courses that are being taught. These are the areas of study dominated by the postmodern stroke neo-Marxist claim that Western culture in particular is an oppressive structure created by white men to dominate and exclude women. Except, let's see here, the system was indeed created by white men because it was white men who, during the colloquial times, had the bigger stick. And what I mean by that is during the colonial times, it was typically white European men or Caucasian men who, when it came to war and owning other lands, they won out against the enemy, against the uh, other side. So we had the better technology, we had the masses, we had the intelligence in order to overcome those obstacles. And when we did, we, f we firmly established the laws um, and the governmental systems to put into place in order to build something from that. So the whole point of conquest or colonialism, if you will, was to further spread out your system, further out uh, your family unit, your community. Now, Again, there's a different discussion whether or not colonialism was, in fact, good or bad. But right now, we are sitting in westernized society, uh, Canada, United States, most of the UK, Australia. A lot of westernized societies have created these laws and this system, which actually does benefit women, blacks, minority groups, gays and lesbians. See, this is where feminism gets it wrong. They think that the system that was built by white men is oppressing people who are not white men. But um, no, but that's completely the opposite. It's completely the opposite. We have built equal opportunities for anyone to become leaders, to become CEOs. Hell, Barack Obama, who is visibly black, even though he's a halfer, he's visibly black minority who became president of an entire nation for two terms. So how is a system oppressing minorities when there are plenty of successful minority groups within Western culture? It, now, if this notion that the system is uh, inherently oppressive to anybody but white men, then you would see only white men in positions of power, right? But then I want to put minorities to you, too, dominate. Okay, sure. But I want to put to you that here in the UK, for example, let's take that as an example. The gender pay gap stands at just over 
And here she's got to go straight to sexism. It must be sexism, guys. It must be because I have a vagina and you have a penis and you're oppressing it. Whereas Jordan Peterson is going to bring in a lot of the factors that are conveniently not brought up when it comes to the gender pay gap. You've got women at the BBC recently saying that the broadcaster is illegally paying them less than men to do the same job. You've got only seven women running the top FTSE 100 companies. Yeah. So it seems to a lot of women that they're still being dominated and excluded, to quote your words back to you. But they're not. The opportunity is already there. The fact that there are seven women in that position means that, you know, it's not denied women. You have that space to pursue that if you, as an individual woman, chooses to. Oh, now I get it. Now, a lot of what feminists are upset about is the outcome, not the opportunity. The opportunity is there, but they want equal outcome. If there are 25 CEOs who are men, then that means there must be 25 CEOs that must be female in order for us to be equal. Except that's not the case. If you have people who choose to pursue these jobs, and let's say the majority of them are men, and you have a small minority of them are women, of course there's got to be more of a majority that are male CEOs versus female CEOs. Why? Because you had more men choose that position to pursue it than you did women. And that's based on the individual person and their merit and whether or not they're competent enough to pursue that goal. It does seem that way, but multivariate analysis of the pay gap indicate that it doesn't exist. But that's so just not do, true, is it? But that's just not true, though, is it? It must be sexism. It has to be. It has to be. That's I mean, that 9% true. pay gap, that's a gap between median hourly earnings. Median. Average. Average female jobs against average male jobs. Averages. Yeah. between men and women. But there's that multiple, exists. Yeah, but there's multiple reasons for that. One of them is gender, but it's not the only reason. Like, if you're a social scientist worth, worth your salt, you never do a univariate analysis. He's basically saying that you don't base your analysis or thesis on one source. You have to look at all the variables that contribute to something such as wages. He's saying it's not strictly just gender. Yes, there are some instances where gender discrimination might occur, but generally is from our choices. Women gravitate to certain jobs, whilst men gravitate to other jobs. Neither is wrong. It's just that that's how it is. He's accepting those choices by individual women versus individual men as just as is. She doesn't like the outcome because she wants the outcome changed. That's what they don't get. Like you say, well, women in aggregate are paid less than men. Okay, well, then we break it down by age. We break it down by occupation. We break it down by interest. We break it down by personality. But you're saying basically it doesn't matter if women aren't getting to the top because that's what's skewing that gender pay gap, isn't it? He didn't say that, sweetheart. You're interpreting it that as such. You're saying, well, that's just a fact of not life. Women it aren't necessarily matter. going to get to the top. No, I'm not saying it doesn't matter either. You're saying, I'm saying there are multiple life. reasons for it. He's saying there's multiple reasons to explain why that is, and you keep interrupting him. Maybe if you stop interrupting him, you might learn something. Yeah, but and those reasons, why, why should women put up with those reasons? Because they're valid reasons, they're factual reasons, and they actually indicate the human nature of females versus males. What's the matter, ladies? You don't want to dive into how you behave in the world? <sighs> Why, should Why should women, women be content not to I'm not, not saying to that they the should top. put up with it. I'm saying that the claim that the wage gap between men and women is only due to sex is wrong. And it is wrong. There's no doubt about that. The multivariate analysis have been done. Well, so I, I can give you, you an you example. You keep on talking wait, about wait multivariate analysis. Let me give you an example. example. Sweetheart, if you stop interrupting him and let him give you his examples, because he is a fucking expert, you might learn something. I'm saying that 9% pay gap exists. Yeah. yeah, we understand that there is a gap. We are trying to tell you the reasonings why there is a gap. Over in the feminist side of it, you think the only explanation is my sexism. Whereas people over in this camp are telling you 
Actually, it has a lot to do with your own individual choices, your level of education, your talent, your own merit, the location of the job, minimum wages, part-time versus full-time hours, overtime, whether or not the company has benefits or not. All of this stems from our own choices and what jobs we like to take. And it also has a factor of what jobs women gravitate to versus the jobs men gravitate to. You see how much more complicated it can be? Yeah. That's a gap between men and women. I'm not saying why it exists, but it exists. Now, yeah, if you you're a woman, that seems exists. pretty unfair. Well, remember how she says she didn't like him overgeneralizing women, and yet here she is overgeneralizing women? You have to say why it exists. But do you agree that it's unfair? No, nah, see, that's a leading question. Do you agree it's unfair? Do you agree with my feelings on the matter being it unfair for women? Sweetheart, he's trying to explain to you what something is and why it's there. It, there's no morality behind it. You're, you're expecting a moral answer to your moral question. Is it unfair? If you're a woman... Not necessarily. And on average, you're getting paid 9% less than a man. That's not fair, is it? On average. It's on average. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Am I still here? It depends on why it's happening. I can give you an example. Okay. There's a personality trait known as agreeableness. Agreeable people are compassionate and polite. I'm such a good friend. And agreeable people get le paid less than, dis than less agreeable people for the same job. Women are more agreeable than men. Again, a vast generalization. One that you had moments prior. Some it's women not a are not more agreeable than yes, men. Yes, that's true, but that's right. And some women get paid more than men. So you were saying that by and large, women are too agreeable to get the pay rises they I'm, deserve. No, I'm... Well, I mean, a lot of it has to do with them being either too passive or to appear, you know, like stepping on anybody's toes. I mean, this is why I promote women to be more confident when it comes to raises. Ladies, if you think you are worth it, let your bosses know. I'm saying that that's one component of a multivariate equation that predicts um, salary. It accounts for maybe 5% of the variance, something like that. So surely so you the need about another 20, you need about another 18 factors, one of which is gender. And so there is prejudice, there's no doubt about that, but it accounts for a much smaller proportion of the variance in the pay gap than the radical feminists claim. Radical feminists will think that it has to do with sexism. It's because of what's between my legs. You're not treating me like a man. Well, sweetheart, you're not a man. You're a woman. So, of course, you're going to be treated differently in the realm of uh, the world around you. Men are treated differently uh, amongst other men. Women are treated differently amongst other women. So, all our interactions are not going to be 100% the same. Feminists want everybody to be treated the exact same, so that way we get all the same results. That's communism. Okay, so rather than denying the pay gap exists, which is what you did at the beginning of this conversation. No, he didn't. No, he did not. Oh, no, he did not! He's actually trying to explain to you why the gender pay gap is present. But you're assuming that he's trying to deny it. Shouldn't you say to women, rather than being agreeable and not asking per, for a pay rise, go and ask for a pay rise. I, Make yourself disagreeable with your boss. Oh, definitely, there's that. But I also didn't deny it existed. I denied it existed because of gender. So this is where people who are more sane and are able to hold themselves when it comes to articulation of their points, he's being very specific here. He didn't deny the gender wage gap. He denied the gender wage gap based around gender being the sole factor of the reason why it exists. And that's where my stance is. I understand that there are a lot more factors than just my gender that determines why this pay gap exists. She's not accepting his answer. Okay. See, because I'm very, very, very careful with my words. So the pay gap exists. You accept that. You accept my perception of a pay gap when clearly you know more about this pay gap than I do because I'm just reading everyday feminism and they say we should just kill all men. But you're yes. saying, I mean, the pay gap between men and women exists. But you're saying it's not because of gender, it's because women are too agreeable to ask for pay rises. So it's make one them, of the reasons. Okay, one of the reasons. Okay, so here you actually kind of get some hope that maybe she's finally starting to get it. Sadly, you'll be disappointed. 
This isn't my world. Disappointed! So why not get them to ask for a pay rise? I've Wouldn't done that, that, I've done that many, many times in my career. In fact, a lot of men do want women to negotiate their wages. I do. And they just I've counseled. Don't. Oh, they do it all the time. You can, it's, so one of the things that you do as a clinical psychologist is um, assertiveness training. So you might say, often you treat people for anxiety, <clears throat> you treat them for depression, and, you, and, and maybe the next most common category after that would be assertiveness training. And so I've had many, many women, extraordinarily competent women, in my clinical and consulting practice, and we put together strategies for their career development that involve continual pushing, competing, for higher wages and often tripled their wages within a five-year period. Yeah, because in a free market system, you have to be competitive. You have to be smart. You have to be, you know, business orientated in order to become a success. Success doesn't just drop in your laps, ladies. You have to work at it. This is where the whole being an adult thing kind of plays a factor. Teaching and you them celebrate how to negotiate. That. Of course. So who wouldn't celebrate it? So... Do you, do you agree that you would be happy if that pay gap was eliminated completely? Again, leading question here. She wants him to answer her question in a very specific manner that will confirm her bias against him and her bias for feminism. Her, she, she believes the gender wage gap is real, so she's asking these leading questions to get him to specifically answer it instead of just allowing him to answer all on his own. It because that's depend. all the radical feminists are saying. It would depend on how it was eradicated and how the, how, how the disappearance of it was measured. And you're saying if you it's at the cost of men, that's a problem. Oh, there's all sorts of things that it could be at the cost of. It could even be at the cost of women's own interests. It's true. We're having the situation now where big companies are actually terrified in hiring women these days because what with all the sexual allegations that are happening, men's careers get destroyed based on a mere accusation. Society is believing women based on hearsay because why would women lie about this? So with society now believing in women based on hearsay, men's lives are getting and careers are getting destroyed based on an allegation that has yet to be proven true or false and not only that companies are now thinking about like literally discriminating against women because they can't afford that risk this actually hurts women it hurts women so much because after years of uh, women's rights movements to get women into these fields and, and to pursue happiness Feminists are actually becoming the hurdles to which they are fighting against and actually promoting sexism. So, Because they might not be happy if they get equal pay. No, because it might interfere with other things that are causing the pay gap that women are choosing to like do. Like having well, children. Well, or choosing careers that actually happen to be paid less, which women do a lot of. Yeah, again, this is female agency, which a lot of feminists avoid like the plague. But why shouldn't women have the right to choose not to have children? They already do. They already do. As a woman in today's modern world, you don't have to give birth to children. If you want to be a CEO of a, of a company or start your own business, who's stopping you? Or the right to choose they, those they, demanding careers. They do. They can. Yeah, that's fine. But you're saying that makes them unhappy, by and large. Well, generally... Maybe yes. I mean, there's been women who got pregnant and then they got abortions and then they feel regret after aborting their child, which creases, increases their stress levels, their anxiety, and ultimately depression. There are women out there who have been told by feminism that you can have it all. Unfortunately, when they strive to, to get it all, like you can't have it all. So they're, they're told two different messages. One that you deserve all the success without ever having to get your hands dirty, but then you have to have it all. And in order to get that, you have to get your hands dirty. And when they're, and when they do, it, it's too much. I'm saying that that, no, I'm not saying that. I'm, I, and I actually haven't said that so far. You're saying program. it makes them miserable. Again, you're misinterpreting again. No, I said beginning. that what was making them miserable was having part was having weak partners. That makes them miserable. Right. Um, I would say that many women around the age of I would say between twenty eight and thirty two have a career.
career family crisis that they have to deal with. And I think that's partly because of the foreshortened time frame that women have to contend with. Here he's talking more about the fact that uh, women's biology kind of goes against them. A major difference between men and women is that men don't have a biological time clock in order to produce offspring. Women have a biological clock. When they get older, they have the increased uh, chances of not giving birth because they are one step closer to what's called menopause. Once a woman hits menopause, she's no longer producing the eggs necessary to take in a man's sperm, fertilize it, and grow it in her womb. When you hit menopause, that's kind of the marker that your time is up. Oh, princess, your time is up. So as Jordan Peterson is saying, women in the ages, you know, mid 20s to 32, 35 range, they have to come to a decision. What is more important, having a career and being childless or starting your own family and having children that you can help love and nurture and raise to become the next generation? What would make you happy, ladies? That's the important question. Mm -hmm.